What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. And today we're on a flipping mission. We're on our way to Punk Performance, located in Nottingham. For anyone that's new to the channel, I own a turbocharged EP3 Civic Type R. We are about to do the world's first dual clutch transmission swap. And we're also installing a quattro all-wheel drive system to this Civic. So that's what I'm on. Let's go. So guys, just before we start the video, remember the live draw for the Ducati Panigale and the F80 M3 will be the 1st of May, which is a Sunday, 10.30. I'll be going live on the LLF Games Facebook to reveal the winner myself. I'll personally be handing these vehicles over to the winner. Remember, you can still purchase a ticket around £10. Ticket link will be in the description. And yeah, fingers crossed. Good luck to everyone that's bought a ticket. Right, so guys, we're back at Punk Performance. We've got man like Cal. How you been all right? Not bad yourself. Yeah, good, good. So what is going on then? Like, so you've cut this tunnel. Yeah, so we've done pretty well so far with what we're trying to achieve. We've got all the tunnel sort of cut out. Uh, we've cut the boot floor out, ready to mount the diff in. We haven't really found anything horrendous under the car. So the chassis is really good. There's no nasty, rusty, horrible bits. There's no seized bolts or anything. For any Anybody that's not too sure, even myself, what's the reason for the tunnel? You say it's for the prop yeah, shelf. Yeah, we, we... These don't really have much of a tunnel in them. From standard, they have the exhaust runs down here and then comes through. Yeah. And then the floor is really, really flat. There's no real tunnel. Not like an EK or an EG Civic where they've got a little bit of a tunnel in. Right. These have got basically nothing. And in fact, the FN2 Civic is even worse. We've cut a big chunk out of the floor without well, the boot here. Uh, that's for the Haldex unit to go oh, up in. Oh, that's crazy, man. You might have just cut in. Yeah. What was that, just a quick thing? Or a bit of yeah, a uh, we just went, did some measurements and we just done a rough cut of everything. Mm. And it needs to be cut out a little bit bigger. We've just gone on the inside of the measurements as a rough first cut to check. And then what we'll do is we'll expand it all, neaten it all up and brace it where it needs bracing. Where the f is that DSG box gonna go, mate? Ah, uh, well, what this is the other part. So we've got hold of a CRV uh, front subframe. CRV front subframes are flat at the back, whereas this is like a big box um, tubes, tubular section. We managed to get hold of basically a complete CRV for good money. So what more have we got to do here then? If you complete what you you need to cut out or you say you need to um, make this section a bit bigger still? We just need to just make this a little bit bigger, tidy all this up, because again, this was just inside of the measurements we wanted. So what's the next move then, Cal? Next move is roll cage. Roll cage, yeah. yeah. To get that in now, you reckon? Yeah, I want to build um, build a roll cage, uh, build a roll cage for it. Just structural rigidity mainly. Yeah. And also, the thing about that is, if we get a roll cage in, we can brace the diff off of it. We can brace okay. the back arms off of it. If we need to brace stuff, then we can. Other thing we want to do is, I'm not 100% decided on this yet. Is I would like to cut the remains of the spare wheel well out. Okay. I want to plate it over and then make a fuel cell up to sit in there. And then the other thing is, I want in tank pumps. I don't want noisy 044s. I don't want to sit in the car and it sound like you've got. A wasp nest behind you it does my head in this way i want to put a fuel cell in internal pumps and make it all look neat, neat, neat and nice like it should be so we've got the diff in place so you can give us a little example of what you meant about what people do with the crvs so when people put the crv rear end on and crv diff and prop it's always mounted in my opinion way too low it's about at this sort of level now the problem with that is if you look at this side for example that's the center line of your hub, so your drive shaft wants to go in there, and yet the center line of your diff is right down here, a good few inches lower. Yeah. So your drive shaft ends up at the right angle like that, which puts pressure on the CV. So you do a launch, you break drive shafts all the time. Mm. That's why every EP3 you see all seems to go through drive shafts. So one of the things we're doing is that's why we've cut all the floor out, and then we're putting the transmission tunnel in here so we can raise everything up. So we've got the right prop angle, right drive shaft angle, everything we need. Yeah, so this is the front half of our unit. This is originally our business model was to be an MOT center on yeah. the front. All of the performance stuff was just going to be segregated to the back section. As you can see, we've ended up taking up the whole unit with performance related stuff. <laughs> um, we've got this, which is just in for another engine rebuild. It's got a cracked ring land. It's been tuned by somewhere. We're not sure, sure where. That one is built engine as well. I know everyone's going to say, Ricky, you need to do a Volvo, mate. <laughs> They're all going to say, heavy engines, right? They're not as heavy as what you'd expect. They're all alloy. This is one of ours sidewinder manifolds that we develop for these engines. There's not many people that, that mess with Volvo. No, it? not in this country anyway. Got an M5 as well, which that's a, another customer of ours. It's a it bent a rod. We bent don't know why. Yeah, we don't know why. No yeah, idea. That it's is what stock. Was it, was it, oh, it was stock. Tuned, and I think, but that's it. So yeah, it's a thing. Like I've said it many times, even with the F90 M5 that I had, you know, you can modify them. You can produce pretty fast cars without building, but at some point you do bend the rods. And this is an F10, F which is basically yeah. engine. Look, there's a bent rod. Yeah. There it's not just like a little bit bent either. It's very, very bent. The problem with these, when you bend the rod, is the tolerances with everything is so tight that when you bend the rod, you move it that little bit closer to the crank and it ends up hitting on the crank counterweights. 
So yeah, man, quite a bit of progress. I mean, it's only been a day, day and a half, and like, look, the car's already in bits. As you can see, Kyle is not playing about with this. He's taking charge, and I've said, look, I want something serious, do you know what I mean? Yeah, everything's gonna get done correctly. We could obviously like skimp on things, like you're saying, we could do things quickly, but yeah, yeah. we wanna do it the right way, right? Yeah, at the end of the day, this the first stage of this is to get all of the fabrication done. We can not build the engine, we can yeah. like not put clutches in the gearbox, we can leave the suspension as it is, we can leave the brakes that are on it, and we can do all of that at a later date. As long as the box is in, diffs in, props in, everything's square, everything's solid and like it should be, then we can do the rest at a later date. So yeah, Kyle's bringing the car down and as you can see, yeah, that's kind of stripped, isn't it? He was asking me like, before we started, he's like, let's strip it. And he was like, mm, should we just put the interior back in? But clearly it'd have been much easier to strip the car. Now we want this car as light as possible as well. I've made an executive decision on the interior. It's not going back in. <laughs> <laughs> Part of the advantage of us throwing a roll cage in as well is there's a lot of additional stuff that's added into these for structural integrity. This is what I was talking about as well, is a lot of people, when they put fuel cells in these, they will put fuel cell here. So they'll move all of this crap out of the way that's been put in and drop a fuel cell in here. And the problem with me is that you open the boot and you go, yeah, oh, it's got a fuel cell in it, but you've got a gap saw down here and it's, it just don't look proper. Whereas I want to cut all of this out completely and then we'll plate up what we need to do. You're still going to have a bar that goes across here because that is your rear arm section. But then all of this will be out and we'll mount, mount a fuel cell in here and make a fuel cell that fits actually properly, that sits flush with a swell pot, all the fuel pumps in it. Man like cow is not playing games, is all I'm saying. Fucking hell. Obviously, I will reveal soon what we're planning to do with the engine. But for now, like you say, let's just do all this fab work and we will run it with the same engine, yeah. turn the boost up a bit more, blow the engine. You never know. You yeah, never know. What You'll see what your power spirit does. <laughs> <laughs> the turbo is called a power spirit, isn't it? 150 pounds. So guys, I'm going to end the video there. As always, if you enjoyed it, hit the thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.